Welcome to another edition of Yorkshire Chris Weekly. In this week's edition, we'll be looking at the borders and creating in the first half of the garden. We'll be looking at choosing seeds to grow this year and we'll be checking on the plants that are in the greenhouse and also in the garage and seeing how they're doing over winter. So we're starting in this part of the garden and this is where I'm creating new borders. So I'm digging up the lawn. So I'm basically going over the lawn, sticking my spade in, turning over the heavy soil, and breaking it all up, leaving the grass, the turf there to add nutrients to the soil as well. It's quite a hard, laborious job because there's a large area to cover. If we look down here, I've already made a start. There's a lot of digging to do. Some people think, well, why am I doing this in winter? Well, I think it's the best time to dig over the ground. It's not too warm, so physically it's easiest to do it because I don't get too hot doing it. The ground's wet, so it's easy to dig over the ground because in summer the clay gets too hard. Albeit on a morning like this where it's frozen, it's a bit harder to get through the top of the soil because it's frozen a bit. But overall, I find it the best time to do all the big hard landscaping jobs in winter. So if we take a closer look, all I'm doing is methodically going from one side to the other, sticking the spade in, going down, down to about a spade step, breaking up the turf and turning it over like so and breaking up all the, the clods of soil and trying to keep all the grass down into the soil so if you look over there you don't see much grass it's all the upside of the topsoil and now if we look around the garden if we come down come down to the start so last week we looked at the overall plan of where we're gonna go with this part of the garden, the winding path. So I thought I'd just walk through where the path will be. So if I start here, this is where we'll do a better path. This is where the gravel path to the greenhouse goes. And eventually the new greenhouse will be in this area where I am now. So the path into the garden will be this path here past the greenhouse. This greenhouse will go and this will be planting. But the main path will start here. I've sort of put the hose pipe, this blue hose pipe, down to where the path is roughly going to go. So I'll just walk the journey through this part of the garden now. So if you follow me behind, the path will go this way towards where the tree ferns are. And then it will switch to turn to a right over to this part of the garden. So be close to this bod here where the Trachycarpus palms are. And this area where I started digging, you see, that'll be all planting in this area. And so at this point, I'll then turn back and the path will carry on going across the garden this way. So where all turf is now, here on the ground, this will all be planting. And then finally, the path will switch back to the right and go towards the jungle hut and then back down the end of the garden over the bridge. So this area will all be planting as well. Now to do my paths, I've decided that I'm going to use these rounded timbers. So these, I think these are 09 meters long, so 90 centimeters long with 10 centimeters wide. I'm going to stack two up on top of each other like this, get some wooden pegs and attach them to either side here. And then these will basically form the sides of my path. So if you can imagine, that will be like the width of my path can see that and then this will go around the garden and I reckon I need about 
about 80 of these to do all the paths in this part of the garden. And it will mean that I'll have some raised beds either side. So once these are on top, so if you look at it like that, that's roughly the height it's going to be. Inside, this will all be gravel. And it'll probably go to the top of this, about 10 centimetres of gravel and sub-base here. And then on the other side, if you're coming closer, so on this side, which will be the border where the plants will be, obviously I've dug over, I will have dug over all the, the grass here, but then I'll add some nice lovely topsoil as well. And then because it's raised, it'll be much better drainage for the plants that I do put in. So that's the plan for 2018. Obviously it's a large area. If you look around, we've got, it's about 20 metres by 8 metres, the area we're going to work on this year. And don't have time and the funds to completely develop all this this year, but I'll definitely get this bed done this year, planted up and the soil put in place and I'll have the full gravel path going round so we can use this area. And because it'll be a nice gravel path, we'll be able to come out to the jungle hut all year round without getting muddy feet like we do now going over the, the muddy turf. So that is the plan for 2018. Hopefully you'll join me on the journey this year watching my videos and creating this part of the garden. So we've not been in the greenhouse for many weeks now. And just to show you the hinebas that are just bare root lying in the greenhouse. They're all fine, no rot or anything in them. The hineba sections and the Montbelliardii sections that are cut are not doing anything yet because it's not warm in here. It's just about 10 degrees so they won't show any life really, any progress till spring. Hopefully we'll get lots of pups off those. There's the other plants, doing okay, but the main thing I want to show you is in here, and that's in the Vitapod propagator, and that's where everything's looking nice and healthy. Got the tender colour cages, got some more hinebas that are going really well, they're in pots, and then these are the cuttings I took in the episode one or two of the series back in end of September or October and you can see they've all rooted really well, they're growing too well to be honest but there's always a light on in here, I've got this big propagating light makes it nice pink in the greenhouse at night time but everything as you can see even the selenium that's growing well so the cuttings have taken there there's no rooting powder or anything like that and they were fine so that's what it's looking like in the greenhouse So the plant of the week this week is Fatsihedra, the cross between Fatsi japonica and Hedra ivy. And it's got these palmate and also ivy-like leaves and it's a scrambler and it'll climb up through other plants. Um, the new foliage will get frosted in the end of the year and the start of the year but it is a hardy plant down to at least minus 10, minus 12 in the plain green form, but there are variegated forms and other forms as well. And it, I've used it in my garden to scramble up through this Trachycarpus palm here. And it goes right to the top, so it goes about two meters, this one. It will go much bigger as well, given time. And like I said, there are variegated forms, lots of different leaf patterns available. And it's a great climber, scrambler, and it's evergreen. And it's a really interesting plant, it doesn't mind a lot of shade. Don't really want it in a lot of sun, but it will be okay in sun as well. And it also flowers like the fatsias and ivies. So let's have our first look in 
the garage since I put the plants in there back in, I think it was the end of October now. So the agaves and aloes are looking okay. Cacti there as well. Even some aeoniums down there, which all look okay at the moment. Got some palms in here. It's got a lattice sector that I didn't plant out. It needs planting out because it needs some more nutrients. So this hasn't been watered for was it a couple of months now? It still feels quite heavy, but it is a loam-based compost soil here, so it is a heavy soil anyway. So that will need a water soon. And this Gemini Sectus, yeah, that needs a little water, so it warms up a bit. I'll give that a tiny bit of water. It's not been watered, like I said, for a couple of months. It's much easier if they're growing compost to see if they need watering, because they're really light when they're dry. Down there, that's a big pot that I shifted in with a puya. Looks okay at the moment. And the aloes. A couple of palms that were recovering from the last couple of years which weren't looking good after being outside. Another trithanax. And the Briar Super Silver which spear pulled last spring, so that's just recovering. Now one thing that's not looking good is agave francesina here which started as soon as I put it into the greenhouse and some black dried out marks on it which are quite deep. They're not rot as such, they're not soft and it's nothing to the cold because they started doing this while it was still nowhere near cold but it's not a good sign because it's spread on a few, well most of the leaves so uh, question marks whether or not this will survive don't like the look of that. But the media picture's looking fine here. And even the strillets here, Nikolai, that's still green and looking okay. Obviously in the greenhouse, it's no, in the garage I mean, it's it's not warm, it's just pretty much the same temperature as outside, but you don't get the frost in here. So that's a look at the plants in the garage. And one thing I like to do at this time of the year is to go through the seed catalogues online and in this case an actual paper catalogue and work out what I'm going to grow as annuals in the garden. I like to get a bit of colour and some large foliage plants as well. So a few things I'll definitely be growing. I'll be growing ricinus again, both the green and the red types. I'll be growing amaranthus. There's lots of different types. There's lots with the pinky purple flowers, and then there's also I've seen sort of like a a biscuity one as well. So I'll be growing those this year. I think there's actually a picture in here of the biscuity one. Let's have a look. Well, there's actually a nice pinky purple amaranthus there. That's what it looks like. And then the biscuity one, I think, has like upright flower seed heads. I'll be growing those and I'll be looking through and see if I can find any more unusual plants to grow from seed. It's always good to grow from seed but obviously you need the space to do it. So greenhouse space is quite tight but I've allowed myself a little bit more space this year to get a few more plants growing from seed. So I'll go through the catalogues now and pick a list of plants. I'm going to grow from seed and next week we'll have a look at my choices. <laughs> 